Welcome back, guys, to the great Ace Attorney Adventures. Well, last episode, our pressing of Bruce Fairplay started to bring results as we noted he had not seen the actual stabbing. But Mr. First corroborated the blood on both hands, which was inconsistent with the gloves brought in as evidence. We then found out what the witnesses really saw, noting that they could only see one angle inside the omnibus from their rooftop seats, and that a third person could be sitting opposite the two they saw, that person being the defendant. Now, with a third party possibly in play, Magnus McGilder was called to the stand to testify, telling us of another passenger he helped get away from the scene, who we thought might be at the trial as the whole courtroom filled with smoke, causing a recess as we wonder what will happen next in the defendant's antechamber. What on earth just happened in there? This is now Hodo. I've managed to find out what happened. Mr. Zato. I was told it was an advanced form of smoke grenade, a type of exploding device that releases smoke. A smoke grenade? It, it sounds like the sort of things Ninja uses. They're just making sure everything is safe now. I think the trial will start again before long. But who would have done something like that? The police managed to catch someone who was trying to flee the courtroom, apparently. Flee the courtroom? Why? Well, it's a young girl of around 15, I hear. A young girl? Then could it be the other passenger that Mc Mr. McGilded was just talking about? My thoughts exactly. So he wasn't lying. Oh, what's become of Mr. McGilded, actually? There are, are so many things I need to ask him about, but he's not here. I think he was summoned to the prosecutor's antechamber to answer questions, along with the young girl. Who is she, I wonder? And what was she even doing here at the trial? She was taking a huge risk, and for what possible benefit to herself? There's another matter that's troubling me. What's that? 20 pence. Ah, oh, um. According to the coachman, Mr. Beppo, he took four passengers that night at a fare of five pence each. That comes to a total of 20 pence exactly. But now it seems there were in fact five passengers, which means the figures don't seem to add up again. Uh, she's right. That is strange. Let's go back to the actual. Counsel for the defense, kindly proceed into the courtroom. The trial will recommence in five minutes. Oh, thank you, officer. We'll come straight away. Well, whoever she is, I imagine this young girl will be asked to take the stand and testify now. I really can't imagine what she's going to say, but it could alter the whole direction of the trial. We'll know soon enough, Mr. Zato. Yes. How much airing would they have had to do to the old Bailey? But it still stinks in there. He didn't snuff out the fire, that smoke. Hello. There's the young girl next to Mr. McGilded. Look. She must have been the one who caused the disturbance before. Well. After that rather eventful recess, the court will now resume the trial of Mr. Magnus McGilded. Now then, Lord Van Zeeks. My lord. I believe you have established the cause of the smoke which fell proceedings earlier. It seems to have been an advanced form of smoke grenade of the sort typically employed by the army. Good gracious! The army! What in the devil's name? It was an elaborate attempt by a young girl to cloak her escape from the public gallery. But she was caught. And now occupies the stand. Hmm. Your name, girl? Are you responsible for the smoke grenade which induced such pandemonium here in my courtroom? What is the meaning of this deplorable behavior? Um, if I may, my lord. Yes, Mr. McGilded? I think perhaps I ought to explain it. Why it is that this wee lass was here in the first place and why she tried to bottle like that? It is all tied up with the events of that night, so it is. Hmm. Very well, Mr. McGilded. Give your testimony. You will explain to the court exactly how this young woman is involved in the case. Just what did happen that night? It's not like a defense lawyer needs that information or anything. Nope. No corroboration with our defendant. The young girl. Means our eyes are unclouded. 
On the line question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and probably nodded off. And bigoa! A loud thud and a wee scream woke me up with a fair start. There was a fella collapsed on the floor at my feet, so I set him up on the seat across from me. Then I turned to find out where that scream had come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? There was a child in there, all curled up in a ball, hiding the wee self away. I remained somewhat baffled, I confess, but from what I gather on the night in question, this young girl was indeed riding in the omnibus. Is that correct? It's exactly as the defense counsel said. This last was the fifth passenger, my lord. Very well. The defense may now cut examine the witnesses. Are you ready, counsel? Yes, my lord. Or rather, no. I have no idea where to start. Well, in that case... Press. <laughs> it's what we do, until we find a weakness. On my question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and promptly nodded off. Hold it! And when you first got onto the omnibus, were there any other passengers already on board? There were not. The cabin was empty and there was no one on the roof deck either. You were the first passengers it were. I see. I oh, and that's why I took the back side as I did. It is the most comfortable, so it is. Could you explain exactly what you mean by the back seat? By all means, it is how you already described it earlier. I'm talking about the seat opposite the one in which the poor gentleman who was stabbed was sitting. Like I said, it's the most comfortable, where I feel most at ease. And of course, I enjoy gazing through the skylight from time to time as well. I guess if you gaze from the other side, you'd just be looking into someone's face. Oh. If a prosecutor has nothing to say, then... Then... Booga! A loud fun and a wee scream woke me up with a fair start. Bigora? I've not heard of that one. Hold it! A loud fudge, you say? And a scream? Aye, that's right. How can I explain it? It was like the sound of someone falling to the ground. That sort of noise. So you think it was the sound of Mr. Mason falling to the floor or having been stabbed? Well, no. You remember I was asleep at the time, so I wouldn't like to say. And when the sound woke me and I opened my eyes, there wasn't a soul to be seen in the carriage but the fellow on the floor. Ah, you didn't see anyone. But at the same moment, you did hear a scream. Ah, from the seats above you on the roof deck, I presume. Not above me, no, my lord. It was from inside the cabin. But I wasn't altogether thinking about the scream. Nah, I was too stunned by the desperate sight before me eyes. There was a fella collapsed on the floor at me feet, so I sat him up on the seat across from me. Ah, oh, ah, oh, I skipped. Go back. <laughs> Take Hold me it. back. You, you sat him up? The victim, you mean? That is, on the seat across from me, as I said. I could plainly see the poor devil was already gone. And you wouldn't leave a dead man just lying on the floor now, would you? It's going coursey, so it is. I find that a little hard to believe. Ah, Lord Van Zeeks, now what would that be? You wake to find a man lying dead at your feet in a carriage, any normal person would hail the cabman. Any upstanding member of London society, that is. Well now, as you know, I'm in something of a special line of business. The business of lending money at exorbitant rates of interest. Unfortunately, my lord, not everyone is thankful for the help I offer them, and some would even see me dead. So I do try, where at all possible, to avoid getting myself in a tangle with trouble. Uh, are you suggesting you were just going to leave the man there? Heaven's alive, no! I was always intending to report it, so I was. Only I had a mind to find out the whys and wherefores first. The whys and wherefores? Right you are! There were some details I wanted to understand before anyone else got to meddling. How will you scream I, for example? Wouldn't your good self do just the same? Ah, uh, yes. Screamy says he heard at the same time as the thud of the victim collapsing. Then I 
return to find out where that scream had come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? Hold it! Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm sure you told the court that there was no one else in the carriage except yourself and the victim. So I did, sir, so I did. As far as I can see, that is. What do you mean by that? Well, now, it's a queer thing. The wee scream I heard as I woke up. It came from, if you'll excuse the vulgar expression, under my backside. Oh, good gracious. Under your backside? And when I lifted the seat on which I've been sitting, I found there was a wee cubby hole there for storage. Mr. Nalhodo, we can examine the omnibus ourselves, remember? Yes, of course. The whole bus was submitted as evidence. I already checked that out. This would be a very good time to have a thorough look around inside. And that's what I found her. There was a child in there, all curled up in a ball, hiding her wee self away. Hold it! You say she was hiding herself? Aye, that's right. It was hard to see in the dim lamplight, but she was all curled up in a wee ball. When her eyes met, well, we had nearly stopped beating in my chest. Ugh. You're really overacting this. Still and all, I pulled her out from under there and sat her on the seat opposite so I could have a wee chinwag with her. Seat opposite? That's right, just next to the dead gentleman there. You sat this young girl next to a corpse, sir. Well, as I'm sure I mentioned, a gentleman in my position could all too often find himself in mortal danger. So, I need to find out just who this urchin was, you see. Hmm. And while I was in the middle of talking with her, I heard another scream. A fellow's voice this time. Presumably that scream was Mr. First, who was sitting on the roof deck seats. Right you are again, I would say, sir. Looking down through the skylight, he must have seen this young girl and the gentleman with a knife in his belly. In other words, the previous witnesses do not in fact see you at all, Mr. McGilded. What they believed to be yourself and the victim was in fact this girl and the late Mr. Mason. Ah, oh, my lord. I was, as I think everyone understands now, sat at the back of the carriage out of sight. It is certainly plausible. A defendant is somewhat diminutive in stature. And readily confused, perhaps, with this young girl. After that, of course. With a scream from the gentleman over us, the driver realized something was wrong and pulled up the horses. Thank you. I've heard enough. The events as explained are clear in my mind. However, at least one conundrum remains. Who is the girl? Her name is Gina Lestrade, my lord. She's a chancer, earns a crust among large crowds, relieving people of their purses. What's commonly called a pickpocket. What? This girl here? A petty thief? Order! Order! Is this true, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade, you will answer the question. Ah! How dare you! What is the meaning of this? Ah! The girl! She's gone! Open your eyes! I'm over here! Good gracious! How? What was the point in that little sidestep? I know what you lot are thinking. Run ups are all the same. This dirty old dipper, you'll say, slipped up and got caught on the job. She got herself backed into a corner so she knocked the gent. Go on, that's what's in your heads, isn't it? No, not at all. This is a court of law. We're here to determine the truth, not cast. Look, knives are for cowards. Only thugs use weapons like that. All I need for what is to do with these fingers. Yeah, all I need for what I do is these fingers indeed. I'm a professional, right? Maybe not in your eyes, but I've got pride in what I do. Let me guess, you don't count smoke guns among weapons for thugs. Oh, this? Yeah, this was in a bag I lifted the other day. 
down where they keep the four-wheel drags. It's nice, isn't it? I like the pink best. Ah, do not wave that thing in my direction again. So. You admit that you were riding the omnibus on the night in question. Tis all right, lass. You can tell them the truth now. All right, yeah. It's just like the Irishman said. The court accepts this girl, Miss Gina Lestrade, as a valid and significant witness in this case. Accordingly, young lady, we will now hear your testimony, if you please. You will tell the court exactly what happened in the omnibus on the night in question. All right, if I have to. What the girl saw. So I stuck inside the carriage before they hooked up the horses, just like always. Glad it was a right old waste of time. I've got nothing to show for my troubles that night. I'll tell you, you can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. It's pitch in there. Then after a while, I hear this loud bang. It nearly jumped out my skin, I did. And the scream just came out. It's because of that. This swell found me. He did help me get away, mind. Yes, he let you go. I fail to understand why you would let the street urchin go, Miss McGillard. Oh, to simplicity itself, my lord. You see, she could possibly have killed the other passenger. I knew that for a fact. How? As I'm sure I said before, sir. I was sitting right on top of the place where she was hiding herself. I think a demonstration is called for. Piling, guys. This is where I was sat that night. And the cubby hole of which we've spoken is underneath the seat, I presume. There was stuff in there before. Ah, uh, yes. It does appear just large enough to accommodate someone of this girl's stature. Aye, but of course, the wee lass was stuck in there. Because I parked myself on the seat for the duration. Ah! So you see, that's why I let the last bolt. I knew that if the police found her there, they'd automatically assume she'd done it. But I couldn't live with myself if a young girl's life was ruined when all the time I knew she was innocent. Even though you must have realised your action would result in your own innocence being called into question. Not at all, my lord, not at all. I knew in my own heart that I was innocent. So I thought it was worth taking a punt on my own good name for the sake of this less fortunate lass. My goodness. What a perfect gentleman. My lord. This, this fine example of a man could not possibly be guilty of a heinous crime like this. I'm ashamed of myself for ever doubting you, sir. <laughs> I mean, great. You're casting a vote towards what I want, but still... God, no. Wait. With calm, calculated reasoning, one arrives clearly at the truth every time. Wait, I won. But I, but I don't want to win under these circumstances! The truth is what I care about! Saints alive! All six members of the jury consensual in their leaning to a verdict of not guilty? Is there a summation examination for the prosecution? Mr. Nalaholo, this... well, it must mean... must mean what? That we're victorious! We've won. Are... Uh, are you sure? Objection! Yeah, there should be. Oh, uh, okay. The sight of my iron-heeled Wellington offends, pray do forgive the discourtesy. This really is a consummate example of the one monumental flaw in British judicial practices. Where evidence and reasoning should be paramount, emotion rules the day. I'm with him. Emotion? The 
witness's latest statement gives us a clear insight into his true nature. What do you mean, his true nature? Do you really think Scotland Yard would have made such a glaring omission? After the incident, the omnibus was comprehensively searched by officers of the police. Obviously, the interior of this cubbyhole, as the witness put it, was included in their investigation. The compartment under the posterior seat was full of the coachman's belongings. It's noted in black and white here in the police report. Good lord! The evidence has been tampered with. In order to corroborate Mr. McGilded's story, someone has unlawfully removed everything from under the seat. What? Which we do know to be true. Order! Order! How could such a devious contrivance possibly have been affected, Council? Naturally, we must acknowledge the deficiencies of the constabulary in allowing this to have happened. However, I assure you, when the omnibus was wheeled into the courtroom this morning, the compartment under the seat was not empty. Well, my Nibbanese friend? Uh, me! When the carriage was submitted as evidence, doubtless you examined it in fine detail as would any self-respecting practitioner of the law. Pray, what did you find the condition of the underseat compartment to be? Oh, to be sure, the young gentleman will be able to clear this up in a jiffy. Sorry? Go ahead, tell the court now, fella. Oh, this is all an elaborate excuse for the desperate Lord Van Zeeks. Oh, no. And so, Rinosuke has to battle with his own morals. Well, Council, you have something to say on this matter? How am I supposed to answer? What can I say about the state of that little compartment under the seat in the omnibus? I mean, it wasn't empty! I, I didn't look. Well, no, of course I looked. It was empty. No, it wasn't. I tell the truth. And now my case gets wrecked. I really don't know if giving this answer is helping my cause as counsel for the defense. But as far as I remember, at least. When I first examined the compartment, I'm fairly certain there were a number of articles inside it, yes. Uh, are you sure, counsel? Allah, be whist! What are you saying now, you daft door? I thought you were on my side here! What game are you playing? Your task is to defend the man in the stand. Why would you say something to compromise his position? As the advocate for the defense in this trial, I confess I'm still not entirely sure where I stand. But it seems to me that I should state what facts I do know as clearly and honestly as possible. Interesting. So it's not altogether pleasing, fella. I'm simply telling the truth, Mr. McGilded. Well, don't forget, you're supposed to be representing my best interests here, lad. Now then. The fella's memory is a curious thing and not altogether reliable. No, the court must consider the facts. That their cubbyhole under the seat is as empty as the devil's art, so it is. Do you think perhaps it would be in your best interest now to admit that you might have been mistaken? Why? Why do I feel like something's not right here? Hmm. I should like the jury to weigh in on this matter, I think. That compartment is designed to house equipment used to maintain the smooth running of the carriage. The guild's rules state that omnibuses should be properly and fully equipped at all times. So it certainly wouldn't have been empty on the night in question. Beppo isn't that irresponsible. That money lending Fisa and the pig purse are lying. Okay, let's not all go to guilty, by the way, guys. Ah! I can't believe I was nearly taken in. The stinking rich are always stinkers. Nothing but cowards, the lot of them. What? Oh no. It's a trick! Of course it's a trick!
Quite so. I must concur here. With calm, calculated reasoning, one arrives clearly at the truth every time. Yes, but every time a different truth, it seems. My lord, I humbly exhibit the scales of justice. Clearly, a verdict of not guilty this time would be wholly inappropriate. Thank you, counsel. But before we proceed any further, there is the matter of the outstanding cross-examination. Counsel for the defense, begin your questioning of the witness, please. Yes, my lord. What just happened? The whole balance of the trial just shifted almost beyond recognition. The Reaper of the Bailey is at work, it would seem. What the girl saw. So I stuck inside the carriage before they hooked up the horses, just like always. Hold it! So you were already in the omnibus before he even set off on his run? Oh yeah, I mean, what's the point of spending a joey to make a few bob, eh? That's a rum idea, innit? I suppose she means there's no point in spending money to make money. It actually makes sense. Counsel, may I remind you that this girl is a petty thief. Kindly refrain from entertaining her tenants. Well, that does clear up the little mystery of the fares and all. Four paying passengers of five birds apiece, making the 20 to which the cabman testified. And one little scapegrace running for free. Scapegrace. The red conch of a driver always goes with some grub before his last before his last run, see? Okay. That's when I slip into the carriage and get myself hidden under the seat. Nice and easy, right? The island place is a storage compartment. Full of equipment for the coach, no? Yeah, there's brushes and buckets and whatnot in there, sure. I always chuck all that out and cram it in a corner somewhere. No one ever seems to bother much. And yet, according to the report filed by the police officer who first arrived at the scene, the compartment was full of such paraphernalia. Well, I don't know nothing about that. Like I said, I moved all that stuff out so I could hide under the seat. That's all I can tell you. Hmm. It seems we've reached the end of that line of inquiry. Continue. But it was a right old waste of time. I got nothing to show for me troubles that night. Hold it! A waste of time? Why is that? Well, most nights I'm on my own in the God Permit at least some of the time. In the God Permit at least some of the time, sure. I I beg your pardon? Did you say God Permit? Oh yeah, well that's what my kind called it. You'd say the omnibus, I suppose. The God Permit, okay. The point is, any normal run, the carriage ain't got no one in it for a while. And that's when you come out of your hiding place and get away. That's it. Only that night. This cove was sat on me, <laughs> my seat from the start. And he didn't budge the whole way, did he? Not one inch. I was totally stuck. You mean to tell us that you were present in the carriage for the duration? You were under the seat the entire time while events unfold in the enclosed cabin? Yeah. Right, mister? To be sure, to be sure. I was as shocked as anyone. You don't expect to lift the cushion you've been sat on and find a child now, do you? Hmm, huh, so this Miss Lestrade couldn't possibly be the culprit then. Well, I mean, everything is true. I'll tell you, you can't see a blind thing in that island place. It's pitching there. Hold it! Sounds true. So you couldn't see out into the cabin at all. Not a shot. Most days I push the cushion up with me head and look out the crack. Then I can have a butcher zoo who I'm going to fiddle. I thought you were a pickpocket, not a butcher. I mean, I can have a look. The seat I get under ain't as plush as the other one, see? So most of the time, the passengers plant themselves opposite. But for some reason, that night, this year Irishman spent the whole journey right over me head. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion up to peek out. I see, sure. Truth is, I ain't too happy in small dark places. Feels too much like being thrown in the clink. Well, it's the only place to hide in them carriages, so it's Obson's choice. Why does she just stick to picking people's pockets in the open, then? 
I'd say there's some reason that she's not letting on, judging from her demeanor. So anyways, I was a bit scared, but I had to just stick it out under there. Nothing else for it. And after a while, I hear this loud bang. Nearly jumped out of my skin, I did. And the scream just came out. Hold it! When you say a loud bang, do you mean the noise of someone falling to the floor? Could have been, I suppose. I don't remember so well. Point is, it made me jump. And you let out a scream involuntarily. That's right. And then I felt the cushion over my head get lighter all of a sudden. Presumably when the defendant got up in order to help the victim, yes? Or not. It could equally have been the moment the accused stood in order to stab his victim, could it not? Oh well, girl, did you see what happened at that crucial moment? Yeah, I saw it. I pushed up the cushion and had a quick butchers while I had the chance, didn't I? The Irishman was seeing up the bloke what had fallen on the floor on the seat opposite. That matches Mr. McGilder's account, of course. But then, the fella suddenly turns around and looks right at me! I sunk back down again, but it was too late by then. I should never have risked looking. It's because of that, this swell found me. He did help me get away, mind. Well, it looks like, time-wise, another episode of the Great Ace Attorney Investigations, Adventures, whatever we call it, is coming to an end. With a testimony nearly picked through, we've not found anything to object to as of yet, or any real evidence to kind of present versus any statement. So it looks like we might be able to glean stuff via pressing. With that said, it might be like the last testimony where we just had to get through it. So we're so close to doing that, and we will continue doing that next time with our defendant having possibly fixed the removal of evidence at the crime scene in the courtroom, which is quite audacious, you must say. Let's get to the bottom of this in the future. I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.